What's going on all you arcade enthusiasts? In this video, we're going to do some Zector ZVG stuff. And I'm going to show you how I got all this crap to do this. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some methods that I did. Now this is DOS, so there's a million different ways you could have done it. But I'm going to show you the way I did it, and the type of computer I used, and why, and, and so on. So, let's check this out. Now, my house is 120 years old, and the basement kind of reflects that. Uh, matter of fact, the floor I'm standing on down here in my basement is about an inch of concrete, and it was originally a dirt floor, so this isn't the nicest looking basement, but too bad. Uh, this <coughs> computer I used is a thin client. Now, if you don't know what a thin client is, it's like, it's like a mini computer that will connect on a network to allow many people to get on the internet or something like that. But uh, this is only one gigahertz. But this is a newer one gigahertz. So this computer's one gigahertz would be comparable to an older computer's two gigahertz or whatever because it's a much faster processor. Now, uh, I used a... Uh, I temporarily stole the 12 volt power supply off my LEDs that are in, that are on, on the around the roof of my arcade, the ceiling of my arcade, and this is of course the Zector ZVG, and it's connected to a uh, obviously a computer monitor, and this was a temporary ordeal. I, I need to take it back out, but for now that's only running my sound. Even though I know I, I know I could have tapped into that for sound, but I'm using this little guy right here. Right here, it's it's like a dollar fifty. Uh, someone on Facebook was, was talking about cheap amplifiers, and uh, I suggested, hey, just tear apart a computer amplifier. Well, some guy made a link, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a buck fifty for like a two watt amp. Why not? So it's just regular, regular, uh, regular, regular uh, speaker, and uh, you know the power the power block for an Atari. So I'm gonna I'm gonna boot this up, and I'm gonna show you what happens when the first when the first screen first. Uh, boots up and how to configure it. Okay, so here in front of the screen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reboot the computer. And that's what you see see when it first starts up. Now I'm running DOS uh, 7.1. This is the same kind of DOS they use with Windows 98. Uh, but also I changed the the beginning the start screen logo, so it kind of says Jason and Kelly's multi vector. You're really not going to see this if I decide to put it in a cabinet. Which I, I still don't know what I, what I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to put this in the cabinet or not because it's like, I don't know, it's, it's a cool idea, but it's not a real machine. It's just some kind of, you know, it's really cool. It's going to be fun to experiment with, but I don't know if I'm going to build a cabinet out of this or not. Although it would be interesting to make a 36 inch uh, vector machine, multi vector. But, uh, okay, the longest, the, longest boot, the longest thing that's happening right now while it's booting is it's taking forever to install the software for the sound card. And unfortunately, I really can't get around that. It has to install the sound card. If it wasn't for that sound card, it would have jumped into that screen like that, you know. But, uh, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and change directory. Oop, press all the wrong buttons. Change directory, flash dot. And we're going to go over to the main directory. I'm going to edit autoexec.bat. I'm going to show you what I did in the in the batch file. Now, when it, with DOS, the first thing your computer reads is the auto auto exec dot bat, and it's basically just um, a program that allows other programs to work. I know that's kind of a crude way to say it, but uh, it's a list of things things for the computer to do. Okay. Now, the very first thing you want to do, well, one of the things you want to do is um, see where it says set g c ah, set uh, ZVG port. This you want to be able to set to where it, with an IRQ that doesn't uh, jive with something else. It, everything needs to have its own IRQ, and this is the port. Uh, now the Sound Blaster, the, you know, they obviously can't have the same thing. Now this right here needs to be where your Sound Blaster drivers are, and see what else. Also, there's a uh, thing right here called Sound Blaster Initialization in it right here. You want that to happen before Smart Drive, okay? And all I did on this, I basically just changed the changed the directory, went into DV main, which is the directory that has the uh, the 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 main uh, what's it called menu, okay? 
Now, let's see here. Is there anything in edit? No, there's nothing in there. This one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn this on. Change directory, uh, dv main. And I made a little program. I'll show you show you what I did here. Uh, edit go.bat. Now, vm menu on the very top right here is the command that actually starts the program. And when the program is over, it goes it goes into pause. If you type in pause on your auto executive file on a ah, on a batch file, what that does is it'll say press any key to 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 continue. Okay. And the reason I did that is because the next command is go, which is the name of the file itself. So what I did is, it, in, in the menu file, at any time you can hit uh, the escape button and exit into DOS. Well, I, I didn't want to exit into DOS because, you know, if I had uh, arcade, an arcade control panel set up, if I exit into DOS, I'm screwed, you know. You can't, there's no, there's no you know, you can't type anything in. So I just made this loop back to itself. And the reason I put the pause there is because I want to be able to terminate the batch file. And the way you do that is press control and hold control down and press C. And that's called, it breaks the uh, batch file. So that, that pause is only in there so I can uh, get out if I have a keyboard handy. If not, you press any button on the arcade control panel and you'll just go right back into, um, you know, the program. So... What else can I talk about here? You know what? Let's just start it up, and uh, I'll show you how, how it works here. Okay. Now, this this started up right now. The monitor next to me is actually running, um, and you can all this is, is configurable. But uh, right now, it's set for a color monitor. It's set for 30 microseconds per inch. That is the that's the very bottom line right there. That is how fast your the, it draws the vectors on your monitor. Um, so let's play some vector games here. Now there's many adjustments on this and I haven't made them all yet but as you can see this line right here isn't exactly straight it's kind of a little skewed and uh, I will make I will make adjustments later. I, I really don't know what to do with this yet. Uh, I don't know if this is just gonna be for fun or if this is gonna be a cabinet that I'm gonna do stuff with or what. Uh, but let's play one of my favorites, and that would be Major Havoc. So now I'm sitting over here in front of the computer. Now keep in mind, I'm going to play this without the controls. I'm basically going to play this with a keyboard, and it's tough to play this with a keyboard. So uh, I may not play as well as I'd like to. Okay, it's, it's basically going into DOS. And... There it is. As you can see, my convergence is off a little bit. I bumped the yoke uh, a little bit, and I'm going to have to line that back up. I never actually tightened the yoke down, and that also bumps my uh, purity rings. But whatever. You can see this was all lined up in a Gravatar video I did earlier. Okay, so I'm going to hit 5 in main. 5 is coin. And Major Havoc doesn't have player 1 and 2 start. Usually you just press uh, Control or Alt one together. Now I can tell right off the bat that this screen right here runs a little slow. But I mean it's MAME, you know. Now this screen here seems to run fine. Except all the sounds seem off to me. But hey, I mean, you know, if you want, if you really want the original sounds, I think at this point the only your only chances are uh, Scott's FPGA or a real board. This this game is amazing. Jeez, yeah, it's hard for me to control with a keyboard. I like how this game says random crap like garbage ejected. But it really has nothing to do with the game. It's just 
Inject the garbage into space. Yeah, when I when I turn right or left with the arrows on the keyboard, it's like full speed ahead. It's as if I got the trackball and just smashed that sucker. Oh, it's kind of tough. You get the idea. That's a, that's a major havoc on here. Now this is Red Baron, and I noticed. Uh, now keep in mind, this I'm running uh, DOS 0.96. I mean, I mean uh, MAME 0.96, and uh, it wasn't really uh, perfected. There's better versions, and I, I may I may update it later. But uh, as fast as this computer is, it doesn't play Red Baron at full speed. So let me show you. A little bit of Red Baron slow mo. My gun sounds like a Harley Davidson. <laughs> the only game where you can attack airplanes with a flying Harley. But yeah, that's that's terrible. Let's get out of this. All right, so <clears throat> what else do we have? Gotta play Star Wars. <coughs> Very cool. Now this, once again, I don't have a yoke controller. I'm just playing this stuff with a keyboard. So this is gonna be terrible. But let's see how good I, I really just want to hear the sounds and the voices. Cause that's probably what's gonna be wrong, I'll bet. You know what? That was a little scratchy towards the end, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, let's start this up. Impossible to play this game with the keyboard. Impossible! Impossible. <laughs> let's see if I can get the Death Star to explode at least. I want to see what that looks like on this monitor. Oh, I, I, I didn't pick the first one. Oh well. I should have picked the first level. I must not have done that. Oh well. I guess there's no Death Star exploding. Maybe I'll put a short clip of the Death Star exploding at the end of the video. Okay. Oh, you know what? We gotta do some Asterac. It, by the way, this is my holy grail. Wish I had one. Uh, I'm working on it. I, I have a guy that's uh, I'm working a deal out with getting a circuit board for Asterac. Uh, but that's far as I'm going to go. Someday in the future, I may actually build an Asterac from a real circuit board and just random um, Centuri parts and have the bezel made. But uh, we'll see what happens. So let, let's let's play some Asterac on this sucker. Very badass. I'd love to have this game. Only 500 of these were made, which is interesting because there's like, how many, was there like 500 Quantums made? And like, you see Quantums now and then, but you never see Asterac. I don't know if they just all got tossed or, or maybe they really made less than 500. I don't know, but really interesting though. I know, once again, I can't really play this game because I don't have controls, but I'm gonna do the best I can. Boy. 
Now, if you don't know our Astrax, it has like a plastic bezel that's like a bump that goes over the monitor. Imagine these graphics with that bump, you know what I mean? Well, I'm terrible at this with the keyboard, that's for sure. I'm actually pretty good at this if I have the right setup. It's impossible. But yeah, that's Asterisk. Now I thought I'd mention that the uh, the computer I'm using, uh, I'm actually booting it and running the entire thing. There is no hard drive that's being used on this computer. It's all through USB. Um, so there's a program online called uh, DOS to USB, and it actually runs a, a legitimate copy of DOS 7.1, not DOS 7.1 stolen from Windows 98. It's a that you know a lot of people say. DOS 6.22 was the last version of DOS. Well, it was not. There was a real release of uh, DOS 7.1. And that was actually the real last version of DOS. And it's basically DOS 6.22. I mean, it has a few little tweaks where they tweaked it for mostly for Windows uses. But it's still there. And I figured, I figured let's get the newest version of DOS. And it was really convenient because if you if you Google DOS to USB, there is uh, an automatic loader where it will it will do this. You know, and the interesting thing is, this took me uh, honestly it took me like five hours to configure this, and I'll tell you why it took me so damn long. Because right here, my thing I'm pointing at right here, it's a 512 megabyte, not gigabyte, 512 megabyte, tiny little card, which was intended to to uh, to use um, Windows XP embedded, okay, and that's what this computer was supposed to run off of. But um, I cannot, could not for the life of me, I couldn't get it to boot off of this. So I decided to go ahead and and I tried all kinds of tricks and whatever. I tried uh, SYS space C colon and try to transfer the system to at least make it boot. I tried messing with the with the master boot record. I, I, I could not get that sucker to boot. So. Unfortunately, I like this little computer though. It's, it's passive cooling. It's 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 cool to the touch. It, it takes very little power, and I like how it's compact and tiny. It takes laptop RAM. I mean, you know, it's it's great. And, and it's funny because I tore this little tiny computer apart, and it had a PCI slot. See, um, if you're gonna run if you're gonna run DOS Mame, you're gonna need a sound card, and and one of the best sound cards, in my opinion, is the Sound Blaster Live, uh, because it has a legacy mode, which will allow allow older programs to think to think it's a regular Sound Blaster, and uh, that's nice for DOS games because DOS games, in general, all of them, I would I would imagine, that support sound, uh, they want to talk to a Sound Blaster. So this makes the myth makes DOS think there's a Sound Blaster installed. The original Sound Blaster. But uh, yeah, so the entire operating system is on this one little stick and it boots up and goes in, it goes in you know, pretty cool, right? Um, oh, also the ZVG, uh, I got this, you see this little uh, potentiometer right here? Um, first off, you see, you see these little potentiometers? Look how tiny that is. <clears throat> well, I stuck my screwdriver on there to try to adjust the size. And I broke it. So I had to find a 10K potentiometer and solder it into this place. This is supposed to be a through hole mount uh, potentiometer, but I, I soldered it in, this, in the place of an SMD. So, in other words, surface mount device potentiometer. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I broke it and I fixed it. Um, that You know what? I, I, feel, I feel terrible about this, but when I got this out of the box, I dropped it and stepped on it. <laughs> I know, I know. I took it out of the box and it like and it like flew out. I think I was excited to see it. I was excited. I took it out of the box and it like flew out. I'm like, oh shit! And I stepped on it. So luckily, I, I didn't really stomp on it, but luckily I didn't kill it. <laughs> so, whoops. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. So let's 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 check out let's check out another game. Okay, let's get back in here and. <clears throat> I have a game in mind that I know I could probably play with the keyboard. And that would be Space Duel. You know what? Real quick, I want to play some vector. 
I want to play some Space Duel because I know I can play that on a keyboard, but let's let's try some Sega Vectors. Space Fury... Zector. Why not? That's fitting. Let's, let's play some Zector on the Zector ZVG. Controls for this one. It's terrible. <laughs> look, look how fast my ship circles around. Unplayable, man. I'm gonna have to get up. Oh, jeez. Terrible. Okay, let's do some space tool. That I can do. Um, I'm kind of partial to the Atari vectors. One of the reason one of the reasons why is because I own every one of every single Atari vector, so I, I can kind of compare it to the original. Because I'm kind of a stickler on like if a, if a uh, if an emulation is close or not. And, and I've noticed, even with the latest updates of MAME and so on, all, damn near all games aren't right. <laughs> but they're really close. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go some, let's do some Space Duel. Yeah, buddy. This is my game right here. sound right here is off. Also, I can tell the fire sound is here off. Oh, and that thrust sound is way off. Still really good. If you didn't own a space tool machine, and you haven't seen a space tool machine for years, you'd never know, man. I'm assuming... Yeah, that's my head. The shield is going to be hard to reach on the keyboard if I ever need it. Oh, it does pick up a little bit. That's alright. No, oh, come on! One player linked. Favorite way of play. Zector ZVG. I mean, I have a lot of things to to mess with on this. Uh, many of these games 
these ROMs don't work. Many of these aren't even loaded up, you know. You know, the, you know what, real quick, did I, did I do asteroids? Kelly, did I do asteroids? No. Let's do some asteroids. That's asteroids. See, black and white games on a color monitor, just they just don't feel right, man. They look a little fuzzy, but they, and the, <clears throat> it's hard to make a perfect white, especially on a vector monitor. That's color. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so let's play a little bit of asteroids. Well, the fire sound is definitely different than the original machine. Saucer sound sounds a little different. Is it just me? And the thump sounds different. Yeah. Of course, this is an older version. I mean, this is the stuff to ZVG was made years ago. The sector here, and they used the main that was available. And I downloaded the main, the package from the website. You know, well, I downloaded all their stuff, and this is what they had going then. I mean, nowadays it's probably a little better if I use a newer version of main, but I still don't even know how much time I want to put into this. I really like this. I wanted this this sector ZBG for several years. This was a big deal to me when I seen it. I didn't have the money. And, and then when I had the money, it was gone. And so I really wanted this. And honestly, now that I have it, it's like, I, I'm never getting rid of it. But honestly, now that I have it, it's like, eh, I don't want to see it. It would be really nice if someone could make an, uh, F multi, uh, like a multi FPGA that boots into several different things and it's you know true true dedicated hardware um but they're working on that i mean that that's coming in the future but all right guys um if you like if you like this kind of this kind of crap i do it all the time on this channel so uh please subscribe if you're interested and uh give me a thumbs up and uh, like it and so on have a good day